Hi, this is Mandy from Black Hive Media, the software engineer and co-designer of the game AlphaLink. In this short dev summary video, we'll go over the origins of AlphaLink, some design decisions we made, and the release. AlphaLink is a spin-off of an unsuccessful crowdfunded game named Kova. Kova was being developed as a Metroidvania title, but was eventually shelved when other priorities took over. The title involved a large science fiction setting that was centered around three factions fighting to obtain an alien relic referred to as a shard. Alpha Link pulls directly from this narrative and dives deep into the faction wars, taking place to recover the shards. In Alpha Link, players take the role of drafted colony soldiers that utilize a neurological connection with their armor, which is where the term Alpha Link is derived. The first prototype pulled the character controls directly from Kova, but we modified them so that players are limited to firing three rounds before recharging or reloading. We toyed with the idea of going a dual stick route, but we decided that the gameplay of a dual stick style shooter is significantly different than the fill we were attempting to create. Instead of frantic spray of projectiles while simultaneously running in any direction, we wanted each shot to be more calculated and thought out. Slowing down players with an aim mechanic definitely helped, but also limiting shots to three drove the concept of short controlled bursts home even further. Reserving shots and getting them on target was more important than who could jump and pepper the screen with the most projectiles. We understand that there is a lot of preference and opinion on this topic, but this is the type of game that we wanted to make, so we pushed through on this design. AlphaLink was originally intended to just be a simple 2D local arena shooter, but when the pandemic hit, we realized how that could seriously affect how players could or could not even play the game. While the first prototype did show well at a local esports lounge competition, we knew internally that we had to do more. We made the tough decision to add an online element, which realistically pushed our release out another 9 or 10 months. It wasn't just because of the online component, but also the domino effect it had on the game design. Going online, we added progression, leveling, bots, training modes, leaderboards, a back end for storing and handling player customization, just to name a few. A lot of this was made easier by using tools like PlayFab to manage our inventory and other features. So now that we tackled multiplayer, we realized we needed some kind of single player component. While our ambitions were scaled back, we did settle on a single player experience that we were happy with. We essentially grouped the maps into their biomes, set it to rotate game modes, made one of the bots have a life meter and act as an end boss, then wrapped it all up with cutscenes in between each biome or planet. If the player plays just the first biome, they get a feel of what the online matches will be like. If the player plays all the way through, they get a fleshed out lore and rewarded with faction specific items upon completion. It's a simple implementation, but one that achieves the goals of getting the player familiar with the concepts of the game, while also exposing them to a small story element along the way. The final phase of development is generally what they say is the hardest part, largely because you're not just building a prototype anymore, you're building a full product. We held very small beta tests to find design issues, bugs, and glitches. We tested a lot internally, finding lots and lots and lots of edge cases that we simply had to play a ton to find. Once the game was in a state to begin the approval process, we submitted a build for certification, in this case to Xbox. It was kicked back a few times to comply with platform-specific requirements that we then patch and resubmit. Once the title passed certification, we could finally nail down a release, which in our case would be the same month it passed certification. This meant a flurry of social media preparation and outreach to get the word out. Once Alpha Link launches on September 30th, we're nowhere near completion. In addition to reaching out for coverage, we'll also be continually patching problems as they come. We have already created a roadmap that extends into 2022, 
of new features and content, so there will be a steady stream of updates. We look forward to seeing AlphaLink grow with community feedback. Thanks so much for listening to this developer summary of our process for creating AlphaLink.